Hi guys, welcome back to another video presentation. We are looking at CSEC Information Technology Pass Papers and uh, the topic that we are focusing on currently for the Pass Papers is that of the problem solving and programming um, section of the syllabus, all right? In the previous video, we looked at the pseudocode question for the may june 2022 pass paper and for this video we are still on that same 2022 pass paper however we are moving on to question number four which is a programming um, related question so let's get into it the background information that we have here is that a credit union gives out loans of $10,000 at a fixed monthly interest rate of 1% on the principal amount. All right. So this line is telling us that we currently have a fixed value and that fixed value is the monthly interest rate. In other words, that value is going to remain the same throughout all the calculations in our program down here. All right, the next line says that the monthly payment is a fixed $1,000. So again, another variable that is fixed is the monthly payment amount, and that is set at $1,000 throughout the entire program. So we have monthly payment fixed interest, uh, monthly interest fixed, meaning that the values remain the same throughout the program. And these are referred to as constants. All right. Next, it says the amount paid to the principal each month is the monthly payment amount minus the interest paid for the month. The second paragraph gives us an overview as to um, what the schedule should be showing principal, among other things. And it also gives us some information in the second line, which says that the interest charge for each month um, once the principal is greater than zero. So in other words, they're telling us that once the principal um, has a value that is greater than the value of zero, then the program is expected to continue to execute because that condition is true. All right. And then between the lines start and stop, we have our lines of code, which we will also be monitoring in order to answer some of the questions. All right. So let's proceed to section question 4A. Question 4A says to identify two variables, which when they are added will always equal to the monthly repayment amount. So in other words, they're saying when you return to the lines of codes above, right, you should identify two variables right and when these two variables are added to each other they should be equal to what the monthly payment is which is a thousand dollars here we have monthly repayment but again the choice of words that they use is still saying it is the monthly payment all right so if we proceed back to the lines of code we're looking for some lines that mathematical calculation calculations are taking place and those start from line 6 to line 9 and there's a leap to line 11 and 12. So we want to narrow it down to find the line that contains the monthly payment and that is line 7 that contains the monthly payment. So the monthly payment minus interest would have given us um, the payment. However, they said that we should add two variables together in order to find the monthly payment. So what we're following mathematical procedures or accounting procedures for the asset equal liability plus equity, we want to shift or change position for payment and monthly payment, right? So in this case, we're moving monthly payment to the left where the calculation, the results of the calculations will be stored. So currently, in order to find payment, monthly payment minus interest is the calculation. This time we want to find monthly payment, so we're moving it to the opposite end. And now we can say that payment is thrown to the calculating side and this set time the symbol will also change from the minus to the plus so the two variables to find the monthly payment once they are added together is payment and interest all right so here payment interest all right 
B for BI, it says that the pseudocode has a logic error. Identify the line with the error and secondly, make the necessary corrections. So logic errors, first you would have to identify what is a logic error. Logic error has to do with those type of errors that we normally will not realize at the same time um, within the lines of code that is written. These we often come across once we run or we execute the program. All right, so we are looking through to see we can check if there is any variable name that was declared that is in the calculations that we did not see. And if we look at line 11, we're seeing that there is a variable name called new principal. However, when we check where the variables were declared, we're not seeing any variable name called new principal. What we're seeing, however, is a variable name called principal. So that must have been an oversight for them in the program. And that indeed is a type of logic error that we would come across once we run the program. So that is on, the error is on line 11 and it is the variable name called new principal. So first they want the line number, line 11, and they say make the necessary correction. So new principal, should be principal. All right, and then in that case, we now are able to proceed to part B of that part B question. So it says to identify the stage in program implementation where the type of error stated in BI will show up and state the consequence of the error. So two things they ask us for is what stage would we find a logic error, right? Or the, yes, the logic error. And then what is the consequence of a logic error? So again, from the syllabus, there were, I believe, four stages in program implementation. We had the create the source code, we had translate or link, we had the execute or the run program, and we had the maintain program. So the logic error would show up at the stage three, which is the execute or where we run our program. All right, so that's the first part. It says to state the consequences of the error. So in cases like these, the program would run and once it reaches this line 11, it would give a prompt um, to say that there is no variable name declared for this. And in most cases, the program will um, terminate prematurely. All right, so we can say program will end or terminate prematurely. All right, um, C says to state the type of looping construct used in the pseudocode. Again, the first thing we would have to know is what are the types of loop that we would have come across in the syllabus? And I believe there were three. The first would have been a for loop. We had a while loop and we also had a repeat until loop. So we're searching the lines of course to see if we're locating any of these. And currently on line five, I'm seeing one of the terms, which is a while loop. So again, for this, the loop that is evident is a while loop. So we say while loop. D suggests one reason why the looping construct stated in C was used in the pseudocode. All right, so again, you would have to know what is a while loop, what's the purpose of a while loop in order to respond to that question. Um, remember from the information that they give, gave us earlier, I had highlighted that the principal um, should be greater than zero in order for the calculations of the interest to occur. And we also identified online 
five that the condition was that while the principal is greater than zero we should perform the calculations that follow so just to reiterate the question it says to suggest one reason why the while loop was used in the pseudocode so the while loop was used in the pseudocode right to um, test the condition first it tests the condition and the condition was that while the principal was greater than zero then the um, actions were to be performed so i guess we could word this to say that the one reason why the looping the loop was used because it allows the program to run or execute an undefined because we did not know how many times the program is expected to run an undefined number of times while the principal is greater than Ooh. zero all right um e says to explain one other named looping construct that could be used in the program so another uh from the two that remains the for loop and the repeat until loop we know that the for loop is used when we know exactly the amount of time that the program is expected to run and then the repeat until loop it will run through a set of condition or perform a set of action rather until a condition is met so the most appropriate one for this would have been a repeat until loop so we would use a repeat until remember to structure your sentence properly um, repeat until loop will be used as it allows the program to run until the condition is met all right and then that would have covered that section we are at question 4f and this is the last of this programming question it says that we are to complete a trace table by inserting the missing values for the variables in each of the row right so based on the first three loops this is the information presented and we ought to help to complete the table. The first thing that I want to highlight is that the monthly interest right here is referring to the interest, right? So remember the monthly interest was set at 0 0.01. That didn't change. However, they initialize a variable for interest. So it is the interest really that we ought to find here. So let me just remove this so that you do not um, become thrown off by it. All right. So we're finding for the first loop, we want to find the payment and the interest. If we proceed to the lines of calculation, we are seeing which one will we be finding first and then line six, then line seven. So interest, then payment. Formula for interest is principal times monthly interest. So the current principal is $10,000 multiplied by monthly interest. Monthly interest is 0 0.01 and our interest is $100. So proceeding to the table, we are able to enter that $100, all right? Now we can proceed to find payment. Line seven says payment is monthly payment minus interest. So the monthly payment value is $1,000, which is fixed minus the interest that we just calculated. So we can return to the table to see that, which is $100. So we then know that 
1,000 minus 100 gives us $900 for the payment. All right. So that would have given our results for loop one. Proceeding to loop two, we have to find all three, which is principal, payment, and interest. So if we return to the top of our screen, first we want to find the new value of the principal. So we're looking for the line that has a calculation for that. So line 11, we had said that principal equal principal minus payment. So what was the last value of the principal minus the last value for payment, which would have been $10,000 minus that $900. And that gives us $9,100 for our new principal. All right. So now we are finding the interest first, then the payment based on how we see it in the lines. So line six again to find the interest it is the principal times the monthly interest we are not using the ten thousand dollars for principal because that was the not the last calculated value for principal the last calculated value for principal was nine thousand one hundred so that's nine thousand one hundred multiplied by the monthly interest remains 0 0.01 and the new interest is now $91. So interest, $91. All right. And then payment, formula for payment was on line seven. That is monthly payment minus interest. So the monthly payment is still $1,000 minus interest. So let's scroll back to see what was the last value for interest. Last value for interest was 91 and then our new payment is $909. All right. Finally, on loop three, they gave us the principal already. So the principal, the value was the last principal minus the last payment. So that was $9,100 minus 909 and that was how they got this value here. So... Following that, to find the interest, 81.91, it would have been on line 6, which was the principal times the monthly interest. So the last value for principal was the 8,191. They gave us that and they said to find the interest, it would have been multiplied by the 0 0.01 and that is how they ended up with the 81.91 here so the last thing that we need to find is payment so if we proceed to the line of code um, payment would have been monthly payment minus the last value of interest all right so let's see the calculation monthly payment was a thousand dollars minus let me just double check payment it payment on line seven was monthly payment minus interest so that monthly payment was the flat one thousand dollars minus the interest which was 81.91 which would have given us a payment value of 918.0 zero nine all right and then that would have provided our end of our trace table and that ends our programming problem solving programming um topic uh past paper 2022 may june solutions i do hope that this would have helped you guys along the way and in order to get the hang of this topic, guys, remember practice is a must. You have to practice to allow for your brain, your hands and everything in between to get familiar with this. Thank you guys so very much for watching and do enjoy the rest of your day. Stay tuned, hopefully, for other videos to come. Bye, guys.